marvelous hello, friends and loved ones. How was your year? It's the first new episode of the new year. I'm in my new apartment. We've got the new film set up. I'm sitting on my new couch. Yep, I think this year's gonna have an emphasis on the new. New, 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 all around new. So let's take a look back at some older titles with my top 10 games of 2016. Apparently I'm not capable of new jokes. Let's get started. Starting off this list of my top 10 games of 2016 is a game from 1991, or at least a remake of it to celebrate its 25th anniversary, Adventures of Mana. A remake of the very first Seiken Densetsu, or Final Fantasy Adventure, that kicked off what we know and love today as the series of Mana. This is a really fun, beautiful, modern take on an old classic, which is its biggest strength and its greatest weakness. While the game does handle really well and looks positively gorgeous, the only thing stopping this game from being higher up on the list is it's a little too faithful of a remake, and doesn't necessarily fix some of the problems and limitations of its 25-year-old counterpart. I wasn't just being cute when I said this game is from 1991, because sometimes it really feels like it is. A lot of people were quick to dismiss and overlook this title when it only came out for iOS and Android devices back in February. But you might be happy to hear that Square did also bring the Vita version of the game stateside later in the year. What you're seeing right now is from the iOS version, which honestly does handle a lot better than I thought it would. But to everyone out there with a Vita, all four of you, maybe consider looking into this title if you haven't. It's a fantastic classic action RPG that still has a lot to offer. Okay, that's enough of that. I hate that song. I really do. But I can't argue that Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE ended up being a pretty amazing game. Many people have their own reasons for disliking this title. That it was initially teased to look more like a direct crossover between the Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem franchises, or the seemingly random things Nintendo of America chose to censor in the localization process. I'm not here to convince anyone that they should buy Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE, merely to say that somewhat to my own surprise, this is one of the best games I've played this year. I know I've made fun of this game a lot in the past, and trust me, I'm going to make fun of it a lot more in the future. But that doesn't change that it's a gorgeous, visually pleasing JRPG with an interesting cast, an incredibly well-built battle system, a lot of side quests, great maps, and a story that, well... My advice to you is try not to take it too seriously, because trust me, the game itself doesn't. Usually, I try and end these segments with a bit of a joke, but I honestly don't think I could come up with anything funnier than the broad premise of Tokyo Mirage Sessions Pound FE. So, allow me to briefly sum it up for you. Monster versions of beloved Fire Emblem characters come to modern-day Tokyo to team up with a gaggle of Japanese teenagers so they can fight scarier, uglier-looking monsters using entertainment superpowers. I'm genuinely sorry that I will never be as hilarious as Tokyo Mirage Sessions number FE. <laughs> hey, here's a random list of things that I love. Underwater environments, amazing sprawling Metroidvania-style worlds, and Insomniac Games, the studio that brought us such classic gems as Spyro the Dragon and Ratchet and Clank. Oh wait, that's not a random list. It's the recipe for a pretty great game that came out earlier this year, called Song of the Deep. Not my best introduction to a game, I'll admit. But you know what does have a good introduction? Song of the Deep. Marin loved the sea. She loved the sound of the waves calling to her through her window. This game is fun, beautiful, mesmerizing, and everything about it blends together fantastically. The music in the background perfectly captures the environment. The dulcet tones of the narrator feels like taking a gulp of hot chocolate. The visuals are stunning. And the way the story unfolds blew me away. The only word I can use to describe this game is... Breathtaking. 
Song of the Deep, 7.8, Too Much Water. She knew this place from her father's songs. These were the lost ruins of the Marrows. <laughs> I think I mentioned this last year, but I'm a pretty big Dragon Ball fan, and we got an interesting game for the 3DS this year with Dragon Ball Fusions. A team-based RPG where you collect and train your favorite Dragon Ball characters. And they're all here. There's Goku, Yamcha, Goku, Jace, Nuova Shenron, Goku, Mustard, Jocko, and the rest. The game sports a pretty interesting battle system, with an arena that you can knock characters out of in order to delay their turns. You have to master power, efficiency, and character placement to succeed in this title, and it's a lot of fun. But the real draw of this game are definitely the EX Fusion characters, where you can fuse dozens of different characters together to get some fun and crazy combinations. Ever wondered what Hercule and Boo would look like together? Fusions has got you covered. How about blending Krillin with Kid Goku to get the hilariously named Gorillin? and the rest. The fusion characters are certainly the biggest appeal, but put that in with a fun combat system, a somewhat short but enjoyable story campaign, loads of side missions, and plenty of post-game content to keep you coming back, Dragon Ball Fusions is a surprise gem for the system this year. Also, like Xenoverse, you get to design your own character in this world. I made mine look like Pixie. <laughs> A few years ago, I heard about a game in development from Rocket Cat Games called Death Road to Canada. I followed the development of it pretty closely and was super excited when it finally came out earlier this year. To give you a rough idea of what this game is, imagine the Oregon Trail, except with zombies. Now add in a bunch of RPG mechanics, roguelike elements, and a fantastic sense of humor. You're the leader of a group of survivors trying to make it to Canada. You'll need to keep a steady quantity of food, fuel, medical supplies, ammo, and of course, locate other survivors to bring along with you. Through a lot of hardship, I managed to put together a crackerjack team consisting of myself, Long Arm Show, King of Archers, and even my good buddy Chet from Heeman Game and Station. With their brave, fearless, and incredibly handsome leader, we were all working pretty well together, and we came really close to Canada. But things went south pretty quickly after King of Archers got killed by a group of bandits. And then we ran out of food, and while arguing with Chet, presumably about the lack of food, we crashed our car into a pole. And then we got stuck in a siege of zombies. I died. And then Chet died. And then Mark died, like, right after. I'm starting to think this may have been my fault. But trust me, dead or not, Death Road to Canada is a super great time and I highly recommend it. December 27th, 2016 is still 2016. I don't care how close it came to the end of the year. Shantae, half-genie hero, is a rockin' good time. Shantae is such an appealing character, and exploring the levels feels great. The belly dancer transformations unlock new areas to explore and rewards to find. I'm a little crab. With fluid controls, witty dialogue, fantastic gameplay, adorable visuals, and an amazing soundtrack from the legendary Jake Kaufman, there's only one thing that nearly kept Half Genie Hero from making this list. I was so into it that I had trouble pulling myself away from it to record footage and narration for the segment in this video that you're watching right now. But I did. Because I love you. And I love Shantae. And this game is great. And if you don't mind, I'd like to get back to playing it now. Enjoy the rest of the video.
If there is any game out there that is the epitome of just one more turn, it's Sid Meier's Civilization. I confess to being a bit of a greenhorn to the series, as I didn't start until Civ 5, but I was really excited for Civilization 6, and have already lost countless hours to this title. I mean, this game may or may not have been a big part of why there was only one Kaiju Month video this year. Also the whole moving thing, but also this game. Civilization 6 is a game where Teddy Roosevelt lives for thousands of years, gets politely rejected to be friends with France, settles Boston on a small area of land rich with rice, and erects the Library of Alexandria in Washington in the year 1790. This game may be fun, but I wouldn't try using it for any history reports. I've been having a lot of fun with this game, and even jumping into it to record footage for this video, I got way more footage than I actually needed because I didn't want to stop playing. It's just that addictive and fun. And I'm curious to find out how Sean Bean is going to die in this game since he's the narrator. If you know, don't spoil it for me, okay? The natural history of this archipelago is very remarkable. It seems to be a little world within itself. Work for me, and I'll return you to life. Oh, here we go. Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, the tie-in story slash sequel to the original Shin Megami Tensei 4. Taking place during the neutral route of the first game, players assume the role of Nanashi, who might just be my personal favorite protagonist we've had in the SMT series. A bright-eyed youth out on his first real assignment, so full of hope, so full of life, so full of... and he's dead. Sounds about par for the course for an SMT game. The story grabbed me right away by letting us know what the stakes are. The battle system is great, properly rewarding clever thinking, and there's also Dagda. He's fun. I love the roles the demons play in this game, and it really makes it feel like a proper addition to the series. This game might also have some of the best characters the series has ever had, making them all generally interesting. I mean, as much as I love SMT, the main series isn't known for its deep, engaging characters, as we're pretty used to seeing characters just exist to be avatars of their alignments. There were a lot of common complaints in the older title, like the subpar world map, but Atlas showed they were listening and touched it up for this game, making Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse not only one of my top games of last year, but one of the best JRPGs you could own for the console. Demons! Angels! Why is it always like this? I mean, it's Pokémon. Is anyone really surprised? Sun and Moon gave us an amazing new region, some awesome looking regional variants, a pretty good story, and loads of brand new Pokemon to catch. Sure, I've got my own complaints with how Sun and Moon were handled, but they pale in comparison to the things I did love and my overall enjoyment of the games, securing their place so high up on this list. I'm not gonna say anything else about it, it's... it's Pokemon. 2016 was such an amazing year for video games that I actually had a pretty hard time narrowing it down to just my top 10. So before I reveal my number one, here are a few honorable mentions. <gasps> Pokemon Go! While not the deepest game out there, I've had a lot of fun with it, even getting friends and family to go walking with me. I'm still getting exercise to hatch my eggs and trying to catch them all, so that's gotta count for something. <gasps> Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth! This game is amazing and well worth looking into. It's the first big Digimon RPG experience we've had in a while, and it doesn't disappoint. If not for the late-in-the-year awesomeness that was Shantae, this probably would have made the list. <gasps> Fire Emblem Fates, these games are great, but if I'm being honest in terms of plot and characters, I still just like Awakening better. Except for Camilla. I love her. <gasps> Monster Hunter Generations, I don't really have a good reason for this one. I barely played it, I'm sure it's fantastic, and with how much I adored Monster Hunter 4 last year, I'm sure this game could have easily made this list, but I just never got around to sinking that much time into it. <gasps> Asago Academy, I mean, I enjoyed it enough to do an entire video on it, so... yeah. <gasps> And if you remember my last Top Games video, my game of the year went to the new King's Quest game, from Sierra and the Odd Gentleman. Back then, only chapters 1 and 2 were out, but this year we got the rest of the story, and frankly, it's phenomenal. Chapter 3 was whimsical and fun, Chapter 4 challenged our minds through its puzzles, and Chapter 5 brought it all home in a way that brought tears to my eyes in ways I couldn't have imagined. This was such an amazing title for me, and I couldn't leave it out of this video. But just out of fairness to the other games, I felt it shouldn't hold a high-ranking spot two years in a row. And finally... The 
It won't be long now. A phoenix approaches this land. Speaking of games that made me cry like a baby, my number one game of the year totally goes to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Spirit of Justice. I am a huge Ace Attorney fan, and this game is the installment I have been waiting for. The setting of Kurain brings fresh life into the series by really raising the stakes on what it means to defend your client. We learn what lengths Phoenix is willing to go to to uphold what he believes is right in this foreign land. We learn so much more about Apollo. We get a case starring Athena that is mostly unconnected to the rest of the plot, but may just be one of my favorite cases in the entire series as far as characters go. And that final case. Without spoiling anything, the way this game gives you all the pieces to the puzzle throughout it only to reach its finale, if you play this game for yourself, when you get there, you will understand why Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice is without a single doubt my all-time favorite game of 2016. And so there you have it, my top 10 games of 2016. Now, as always, please remember, I'm not saying that these are the best games of 2016, merely my personal favorites. So if a game that you liked wasn't on this list, I either didn't play it or I simply didn't like it as much as you did. Also, for the record, I have not played the following games. Cool. But now that 2016 is over, we can look forward to 2017. It's the 30th anniversary of Megami Tensei, as well as the 25th anniversary of Shin Megami Tensei. We've got the Nintendo Switch coming up in a couple months, the long-awaited Space Venture should be on the horizon, and I think Atlas USA is even releasing some little obscure JRPG title. Persona... something or another? I might pick that up. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my top 10 games of 2016. It feels really weird knowing this is the second time I'm ringing in the new year with you all. As always, please consider giving this video a like if you enjoyed it, or if you want to let me know what games you loved last year, consider leaving a comment. I always love listening to people explain things they're passionate about. I've got a lot of really fun stuff planned for 2017, so if you're not already subscribed, it'd mean a lot to me if you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Or if you want to watch the last video I did, my top 10 Gen 7 Pokemon, you can give that a click and check it out right now. As always, thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care. Okay, maybe just one more turn.